So, we grew again. <laughs> Hello everyone. It has been a little while since I have got in front of the camera to actually talk to you guys. And this is just going to be a little vlog to kind of catch you up on what's been going on in Chips and I's life. And also to say a huge, tremendous thank you to each and every one of you for joining us on the ridiculous adventure that being the pixel biology community has evolved into over the years. And we have reached a beautiful stage in our evolution because there are now over 600,000 people who at one time or another in their lives have come together for storytelling, for role play, and for curiosity about the natural world and joined the pixel biology community, which is really kind of mind-blowing and it's a lot easier to just kind of pretend that, that woof, woof. <laughs> basically that's a lot of people I have actually been trying to wrap my head around how many people that is the last few days and I figured out the perfect way to explain to you guys just how many pixel biologists are out there in the world who share our interest, our passion for the natural world, our love of storytelling, who are out there so that we never have to feel alone in the things that we're really passionate about or about loving storytelling or really loving random animal facts. Any of those things that, that you, sometimes you might feel like having this enthusiasm and this really vibrant passion for whatever makes you really happy and excited kind of also makes you sort of alone with it, you don't need to worry because there's like 599,999 other people out there somewhere in the world who also share some of those passions with you. And growing up, I always felt so alone with my like encyclopedic addiction to anything about nature, anything about animals, and also to everything like Harvest Moon and Sims and gameplay like E, that I just didn't have anybody to share those things with. And I'm so glad that we have each other to share that with. And I'm so glad that not only do we have each other to share all of these adventures with, but we also have each other to be able to really carry forward this passion and this love for storytelling and kindness and and just learning more and caring more for the world that we all share and really doing something amazing together in our own small ways to about that to make the world a better place and i'm just oh, i'm sincerely from the bottom of my heart grateful and touched because every time we hit some sort of subscriber growth number the only reason it really matters this much to me is not only out of gratitude that you guys have joined me on this journey, but out of that sheer relief of knowing that never again will any of us need to feel isolated and alone in what we're passionate about. We may not directly be able to talk to the 999,999 other people who also share these things, but I think it's really just empowering to know that in spirit, Somebody, somebody, else, uh, somebody else out there, they're a pixel biologist too. Stay curious, friend, stay curious. Uh, and I came up with a way when I was trying to visualize 600,000 people that I could show you guys just how many that is. For one thing, trying to visualize 600,000 people pretty much made me want to faint because I'm exceptionally shy and the idea of speaking in front of a crowd that big, that big, <laughs> Like, what stadium is gonna hold that many people? Let alone, like, what would I say? I guess if I had to be in front of all of you guys at once in the stadium, I think I'd just, like, stand there and be like, hi, um, be nice to each other, use a reusable bag when you shop, um, plant a tree, stay curious, and I'd probably just bolt. Or I'd faint. We'll find out, maybe, one day. I hope not. <laughs> So I found a less socially anxious way to try to represent to you guys how many people are in our community and how many people are at least united in spirit with us. And that is through animals. So I looked it up and if we took the size of our community and how big we have become, we now have over 600,000 members in our community, which is more than all of the giraffes, all of the gray wolves, red wolves, cheetah, panda, blue whale, humpback whale, all species of rhino, Victorian crown pigeons, amur leopards, orangutans, mountain gorillas, snow leopards, African wild dogs, black-footed ferrets, saola, and T-Rex, 
chips out of that last one who are alive and share this world with us. So let's back up and just think about that for a second. There are more of us than there are giraffes, wolves, mountain gorillas, like leopards, snow leopards, black-footed ferrets, which are really cute by the way, Victoria crown pigeons, another one of my favorite animals. Like if we took all of those animals that literally exist in the entire universe that I just listed, because you know, they're not anywhere else off earth either. There's more of us than there are of them. That's pretty powerful to think about. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but that's really powerful for me to think about because it's not just about storytelling here. It's also about trying to do some really wonderful and good things, even in those small little ways that with this many of us definitely would add up into something powerful. And I hope that maybe the little seed you could take away uh, that I would offer to all of your lives from our really silly random adventures when we're playing <laughs> random games is that there's always a love of the natural world and a fascination of the natural world that I carry in everything that I do. So every video you're watching, no matter what it is, laboratory episodes, if you're digging through our Warrior Cats archives, if you're joining me on our Wolf Quest like 10 generations long story that I'm trying to tell right now, if you're diving in with Sims, if you just think some of the silly mobile games that I jump into play sometimes are your jam, Whatever it is, I hope it provides you with a seed of excitement and love and passion for this planet that we share, not only together, but with all of those animals. Like each one of us could be responsible for one member of those animals in the world, and all of us could take care of all of those. <laughs> like what? <laughs> but I hope you can take that seed of love and passion, and what we love and what we learn more about, we take care of. It's just the truth of it. The more we learn about something, the more we tend to take care of it, the more we appreciate it. And so I hope somewhere in all of these silly adventures that we tell and all of the, the years of journey that this has been, I can leave you guys with that little seed. So that's, that's what I think about when we hit these milestones and it means a lot to me. And I hope that we can represent those values more moving forward because we've still got years to go guys years to go and i want to really show you guys how as we grow the combined force of who we are and what we do can really make a difference in the world we've already raised thousands of dollars for giraffes in the past we've planted hundreds of trees we've donated a ton of money to multiple animal charities over the course of our adventures and now I want to make a formal pledge, now that we've passed 600000 to take the help that I get from our, our community and to invest it back out in the world. So every single one of our patrons that we have as busy beavers and above, I will plant a tree for every single month in real life as well as in zoo crafting, which is indeed coming back. And we're gonna see as time goes by if there's other ways we can do special things to do events to plant trees or to raise awareness or funds for different things that exist in the world to show how love can transform into care. And the more we care for something, the more we can turn that love into a amazing action. Love with care is like taking a seed and planting it and then watching it flourish. And there's even more that you can harvest from that afterward. Uh, but I'm getting lyrical and philosophical, a side effect of being married to an actual philosopher, by the way. Chips is a man of many hats, and one of those hats is actually making dinner now, so I won't go on too much longer. But I, I, I did want to say thank you so much for all of this, guys, and I wanted to let you guys know what's ahead. So, as we now cross 600,000 people, which is more than all the giraffes in the world, uh, uh, in our community, we do cross a really exciting milestone. And we're also coming up on another really exciting set of milestones. Our community is almost eight years old and that's coming up in January. That's older than the majority of my nieces and nephews, many of whom are being born either next month or at the end of the year. There's a sudden sprouting of my family tree going on over there. <laughs> and I, wow, so it's going to be eight years old. I will have been doing this for eight years and we will have 10,000 episodes by the end of the year as well. 
We're approaching and over, I think, 9,600. So well before the end of the year, we'll have 10,000 episodes in our archives. And I will have created 10,000 videos and adventures <laughs> over the last eight years of my life uh, and put them out here on our YouTube channel and shared them with all of you. And especially with everything that has happened with the pandemic and COVID over the last year, I really feel like life asked very hard questions of all of us over what we want in our futures. And for me, I spent some big time in the last couple months traveling with chips to reconnect with our family, with our friends, you know, once we were post uh, Fauci ouchie, as my sister called it, or vaccine. We started traveling and safely visiting with family and friends and visiting with each other outside of the setting of our wonderful home, which hosted us as a cocoon for like 18 months, and also visiting with the world. And Chips and I actually sat down and asked some of those hard questions. What do we want out of life? Since this last year really showed how precious and fleeting it can be and how many members of our family had really unexpected things happen um, that will have long-term consequences. It made us realize you need to really appreciate the opportunities that are available to you while they're there. And if you guys have been around for a long time, you may know that I am a supreme workaholic. And it really made me wonder, will I want to look back on possibly losing out on people or opportunities and be glad that I crunched videos out for 18 hours a day? Or will I want to find a way to be able to balance my life a little bit more? And do I want to do something totally different? I asked those kinds of hard questions. I thought about going back to school for, you know, maybe studying ornithology with birds. Maybe I want to finish up my sociology degree and really dive into human behavior sciences, which is another fun thing I was getting into before I got sidetracked with being a pixobiologist. Do I want to go back for zoology? Do I want to start working maybe at an actual zoo? Do I want to start teaching again? I asked a lot of hard questions and explored a lot of paths with the chips by my side now that we celebrated a year of being married last month too. And I thought really hard about what I want my future to look like. I turned 33 this year and that means I'm really getting into a good chunk of the prime of my adult life. And I asked myself, does YouTube still have a place in that? Is that still where I want to be? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. I stood at the crossroads and I realized from the bottom of my heart, in my every day, in everything that I love to do, yes. If I look back on my life and I spent all of my late 20s, all of my 30s, maybe even all of my 40s, showing up, telling stories, sharing facts about the natural world tacked on to the end of videos. I'd like to think those facts are kind of like the facts you used to get from a lollipop or, or from a popsicle when you finish it. It's like the little hidden fact at the end of the video, little treat. Um, do I want to do that the rest of my life? And the answer was yes. I want to be a storyteller. I want to share my passion, love, and enthusiasm for creativity, for the natural world, for being able to embrace being silly and being yourself, going at your own pace and doing things in your own way. I don't really think our channel looks anything like any other YouTube channels out there anymore because the platform has changed so much in just eight years. And I don't know what it will look like eight years from now, but I know even though we're approaching an eight year milestone and 10,000 videos, from the bottom of my heart, if I look back on my life and I spent another 10 years and another 10,000 videos, 20,000 videos, being here and doing what we do and finding ways to do it even better and finding ways to use the force of how many of us there are to try to spread some kindness, some goodness, some love of this world and each other and ourselves through the world, it will be a life I am proud to have dedicated myself to. And it will be a life I I know I will be proud to have lived. 
and it will also be a life full of ridiculous silly moments it will be full of adventures that i can't even picture if i went back eight years ago i would have had no idea that i would have fed giraffes at the san diego zoo as siri the giraffe named siri actually i would have had no idea that i would have gone on all of these adventures with all of you or gone to twitchcon and streamed there with planet zoo or or just gotten so many so many hundreds of sweet letters and pieces of fan mail from people around the world i would have never imagined that i would wake up and every day walk into an office that is literally surrounded and draped with the pictures and the art that people have sent in surrounded with binders absolutely full of fan mail, plushies people have made of characters that we have enjoyed, and I would I would have had the chance to reach so many people and and I just didn't I couldn't imagine that. So YouTube's an unconventional career, the that fact being I can't imagine what eight years from now will look like because <laughs> there's no blueprint and you do it in your own way. And it means that I will be forging my own life and doing my best to try to balance the ever churning finances and the aid from our Patreon and the uncertainty of YouTube as a platform for years to come. But I'm willing to accept and embrace the uncertainty that comes with being here. If it means that being here can create this place and this space for you and for our community. If you watch every video, which I would be amazed if you did, holy cow, if you stop in and out, if you have phases of, of coming and going, if you just like to show up and kind of snuggle with something familiar from time to time, whatever reason you like to be here, I am really proud to have created this space and I'm really proud and happy to offer it to you. And I plan on doing that for many years to come. I plan on committing myself to this and truly dedicating myself to this and to just accepting the uncertainty of whatever YouTube has to offer in the future um, for what it is and no longer being afraid of it, no longer forcing myself to be a workaholic to try to outwit the algorithms <laughs> that never worked. And I'm just going to keep making videos how I want to make videos and the videos that I want. And part of that also means that I'm also not going to do it with a workaholic mentality anymore. A lot of what pushed me so hard to make so many videos for so long is the fact that nobody can tell you when YouTube is just going to disappear out from under your feet. And I treated that like having to sprint like a terrified hamster in a wheel where you, you don't even know when you're gonna get fed or what the treats are going to be for years. <laughs> if you guys have been with me for years, then you know I have overworked myself consistently on and on and on and on trying to to outwit the algorithm trying to make sure views stay up here trying to satisfy like people who are looking for wolf quest and i swear to you guys if i do daily wolf quest all the way through 10 generations with two lines of wolves and people still ask me where wolf quest is i'll just have to accept that it's part of being here <laughs> and give a link to the playlist <laughs> but all of that insider rambling to say I am ready to just keep being us and I will continue to be us and I will continue to make videos the way that I want to and also at a pace that's better for me that gives me actual time to go camping with my husband, to enjoy dinner together, to read books, uh, to breathe, to relax, things that I really haven't given myself much of in the last eight years, to focus on my health, to appreciate my family, the new puppy that we have to play with at my in-laws, the wonderful new nephew that I have due next month to, that I want to go see. I want to spend time with my mom and dad as they continue to recover from COVID. And I want to meet my new nestling, nestling, unknown, unknown, that's coming in December and just embrace whatever other adventures that I might be able to go on in life while still being Siri. So the pace of things, as I mentioned in our community tab, you can see a uh, much more succinct little update about what's been going on in our lives, including the fact that Chips and I accidentally swam with a shark. Yeah, that was a little scary. It was an accident. I swear. 
not for him, probably for us. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you see that some series tend to be maybe a little patchy here or there, or if I sometimes vary up the pacing, I in the past know that that has provoked comments asking, where's this series? Where's this series? Oh my gosh, Sarah, you have forgotten about things. And I, I promise you guys I haven't. Um, but I'm going to start trying to look at being here not as a sprint where I have to go as fast as I can to get so many different things out. I'm going to look at being here as a long, wonderful hike through some mountains full of adventures with you guys. And I'm going to take the time that I need to rest on that hike to take care of myself, to focus on really getting my body healthy, to focus on being able to build a, a wonderful routine of playing Gloomhaven with my husband because, wow, it's a really fun board game and we love the D&D roleplay aspect of it. Um, and he says it's really creepy when I read about blood cults, by the way, and all sorts of like evil, scary, bad monsters in my Siri voice. So I always use my Siri voice when I'm reading the things in Gloomhaven, even if they are a little dark, just because I think it's kind of funny. That's an aside. But anyway, all of that to say, we're gonna go on a big hike still together. And if uh, like certain series are missing, the number one thing you can do to bring them back is just leave a nice comment about that series and let me know that you like it. Because the only way I can tell people really like a series is if they leave comments saying what they like about it. <laughs> Because, you know, the algorithm can sometimes make the numbers on what videos get popular really weird. Like, our Raft video has gotten several million views in the last few months. Do you guys like Raft? I can't tell. No one comments on it. So I don't know if I should play Raft. So that's to say, if you guys really want to see a series, um, for one thing, please have some patience. I'm probably like diving into learning a new cooking thing with my husband or going camping or trying to work on my little fitness routine. Um, and just know that when the videos come out, they're going to be coming out at a pace that's healthy for me. And if you would like them to come out faster, literally the best thing you can do is just leave a comment about what you like about that series. Nothing has ever gotten me more motivated to sit down and to blast out just tons of episodes of something as somebody just leaving a really specific comment about like, for instance, someone recently commented on how much they loved Terry and Trisha from our 101 Dalmatian series and would love to see like more puppies. So now I've been planning on going back into Sims 3 and that's going to end up making me probably go back into the Warrior Cat stuff and probably back into the Sims 4 stuff. It sparks off a whole network of inspiration and excitement in me. When someone just leaves a nice comment about that and it helps me kind of reorient and continue on with doing those, those series amongst our hundreds of options and adventures. Um, so that's my awkward way to kind of tack on to the end of this like meandering video. <laughs> about how I'm going to start going at more of a sustainable hiking pace, bringing you guys along with me through our mountains of adventures. So if you just see them kind of ebb and flow, I'm probably up to something fun, probably doing something really cool in life and just balancing that energy. And I no longer feel stressed or guilty about that because I know I am committed and dedicated to being here for years with you guys and I'm committed to thousands and thousands more adventures. Thank you for building a life with me that I could never have imagined. And it's a life filled with joy and gratitude and I mean, look how many joy journals I have filled up over the years. Like, look at all of those. Do you know how much I talk about you guys and write nice comments in there? That's like half of it. <laughs> And because you guys watch, I, I have a roof over my head and food to share with my husband and camping gear we just got today so we can go camping and I will take you guys along with me when it's just him and I and not like our whole family because our whole family is very shy. They're like mysterious mythical cats. You'll never see them, unfortunately, but that's okay. But I'm rambling. Thank you for helping me build this life. You guys watching our episodes take care of me, and I hope I can take the best my life has to offer and give it back to you in return. And I can't imagine a better life, one that I really will, if everything works out so that this can happen on YouTube for the rest of my life, 
I have a feeling I'll probably be here. So maybe check in with me in eight years. Maybe I will end up uh, bowing out to go become a giraffe rescuer. Who knows? But for now, I predict many, many, many years and thousands more adventures to come. And I look forward to growing and growing up with you guys together. So guys, thank you so much for 600,000 members. Like I said, we're gonna start planting trees for every busy beaver we have on our Patreon and above, uh, and also the trees that I owe in zoo crafting. Trust me, I have big, big plans actually. Mini notebook worth of plans on what we're gonna be doing about that. Um, and I hope there's gonna be other ways where we can continue to try to use our combined awesomeness to make good changes in the world. All right, guys. Stay curious. <laughs> Bye.